Okay, so uh, here we are. We're having some. Uh, it's like called breakfast, but it's uh, it's just a pile of vegetables. It's the first meal of the day. Yeah, we, it's, first we're breaking the fast, as they okay. say. So, um, what are you working on? Well, um, a couple things. So, as we were leaving, I was designing the um, ESP32 Feather. So I'm working on that. But one of the the things that I've recently been finishing up and getting ready for a prototype is um, we we recently started working on an at SAMD21 port for MicroPython. So that means that you could you know basically plug in something like the Feather M0, you get a Python Weapple, and you can just start typing and coding. And so I designed, you know, we did the Metro, which is yeah, so um, it's a low-cost Arduino compatible low for like hackers and yeah. educators. So what I did is I spun that with an at SAMD21, and so it has the same pinouts as an Arduino Zero, but I put some SPI Flash on there, specifically to make it easy to yeah. use with a MicroPython, because MicroPython, you want a lot of Flash space, so you can drag and drop files and have like yeah. your libraries and That's stuff. That's pretty cool. Because, so add some storage. So add some storage. So it has like a two megabyte Flash on can there. Can you add more later if you wanted to? Oh, it goes up to 16. 16. Is I it mean, the same footprint, same size? Yeah, all, all Flash, all SPI Flash so like, is SOIC. It's, we could potentially uh, have a, a bigger version down the road as the prices come down. Yeah, Re- sure. Raspberry Pi style. Yeah. We just keep throwing some, some RAM on it. And then um, Scott S., who's working on the port, he's like, oh, you know, it was his idea. He's like, let's, you know, because you have the SAMD21 and it can do native USB, how about we have it be a mass storage device? So you, dr- you plug it in and then you drag your Python script onto this flash storage chip. And the flash storage chip's like 10 cents or 20 cents, very cheap. You can get two megabytes of storage for 20 cents. So it doesn't add almost anything to the cost, but you get this really elegant way of programming where you know you don't even you don't even have a compiler there's no compiler you literally no. drag your python script yeah, you on. can have a text file you could have a text file like that. you could have like audio files or video files so if you want to have um, you know the python code uh, play audio because it has a dac so you could have it make sounds or you can have it um store data logging mm-hmm. to the spi flash because it would just be like the storage so i think that's i think it's actually kind of cool uh, you know, what's interesting is the first Circuit Playground that we designed when I was first drafting Circuit Playground with a 32U4, I actually wanted SPI Flash on there. Decided not to because it didn't make as much sense. Um, Because again, I couldn't do mass storage. We didn't have enough flash for that, like the chip flash to implement mass storage. But I like the idea of SPI Flash. And so this is kind of, you know, I'm thinking of a new Circuit Playground, a new Metro M0 with, that is designed specifically for Python support to allow anyone to program without needing a compiler. No IDE, no drivers, nothing. Yeah. It's just you, so, you plug it in, you go. We learn a lot from like Tony D's tutorials. Like, mm-hmm. okay, like here's what we're gonna try to teach people. Here's some of the things that we need to do around MicroPython. We're actually talking to Damien. Um, whenever you're watching this video, time is different. But for us yeah. right now in this timeline, it's tomorrow. Yeah. And we're trying to figure out like, how can we unify um, the boards in some way, so there's a protocol that they can all do mm-hmm. stuff. But, yeah, because the low level, like pin, yeah. pin high, pin low, digital I/O is like pretty much done. Analog I/O is pretty much done. But once you get into I squared C and SPI, there are some variations between the boards uh, because each each fork, each implementation of MicroPython kind of went their own way. And so, some SPI is like some SPI master implementations. You you have to set the polarity and frequency, and some you don't. Because you know there's like four different modes for SPI, but like everyone uses mode zero, so it's like if you implement just mode zero, you're probably good to go. But you're supposed to implement all four, so I think stuff like that it, it's still in progress, like that's being worked out because MicroPython is pretty new and and it's starting to be you know it's it's starting to be implemented for other chipsets. So that's kind of interesting. Yeah. So we'll probably have a Metro that's Arduino shaped, Arduino compatible, but it's a MicroPython board with extra storage. You can use all the shields and accessories that you come to expect and love, and then we'll have a circuit playground that's yeah. MicroPython. The MicroPython I'm still with, working uh, on with that. flash on it too. Yeah, so that's that. I think Scott's idea to like put on um, flash was really important. I think that was like that was kind of like, oh right, like that now you can do mass storage because there's not enough flash yeah, space. I remember you talked about that when we were working on. Yeah, it reminded me, and then um, Tony D's idea of having a circuit playground with the at SAMD21, like it kind of it's it's a all together came together very well so that's good so the question is what 
what are we going to call this? And so, yeah. so Metro, we had some ideas. Yeah, so Metro, um, it, it looks like a uh, transit-like thing. That's why we made it's it. It's a Metro car. It's it, a New York. Well, it could. It looks like a transit any, car. Any city has like a Metro-like car. So, um, you know, we could call it Express because it just gets you going really I liked, fast. I like the Express name. We had, yeah. we had um, Circuit Playground ready. Yeah. That was the original? Because you, you liked... You uh, know, there was a... Yeah, I think listo is a word. Yeah. Like, it's uh, Spanish for, like, ready. Yeah. Metro listo. Uh, that could be interesting um, because it's just ready out of the box. Uh, but right now, I think, um, you know, Metro Express, because it keeps the transit theme. It and is local and express line. Yeah. And, and we have a, uh, like, a learning map that looks like a uh, transit map. Yeah. And now you're like, you know, toot toot. Let's, yeah. let's go to MicroPython yeah. land. Um, snakes on a train, I guess. Um, so, I think that's what we're leaning towards. But yeah. um, you know, what we do is we think of names, and then we see if there's anything out there that's named like it, because mm -hmm. we would not want to do that. Would not want to create confusion. Mm -hmm. So the the Metro Express for a microcontroller platform is probably fine. Uh, but we'll check with our, our trademark attorney as usual um, before we decide to do something, and then. Um, you know, the other thing that we're working on is um, a potential for a chip. Um, you and I are, are fans of the idea of Transmeta and all that, yeah. that that code morphing technology. And it would basically emulate like x86 architecture yeah, inside yeah, yeah. the chip. So we're thinking about something like that for us. And, uh, you know, this is, it's not out yet, don't ask, but um, that could be interesting where. Adafruit would be able to have a chip that, depending on what you want to do with it, that's what's on it. Mm -hmm. And um, the the form factor in the boards can be different, but you know the the core chip is uh, reflective of what you want to do. So Feather, Metro, Circuit Playground, mm -hmm. all those things would be nice to have uh, a way to have one chip, and depending on what it is, is what it does. Yeah, like unifying all of these platforms. Yeah, we're getting there. We're getting yeah. there. So uh, we're thinking about That's that. That's what we're on. We have ideas. Yeah. Um, and then uh, I guess some other notes. Uh, tomorrow, again, our timeline. Uh, tomorrow, uh, Joe Ito is going to stop by if it works out. And he's doing a series of uh, videos and podcasts and more. And uh, we were emailing this morning. He's like, hey, can I stop by like, tomorrow? And I'm like, whoa. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we actually can do that. <laughs> and he's doing things with like Wirecast and Facebook Live and iTunes podcast, and I'm like, oh, this is our setup and everything, and he's one of the few people that does stuff like this, so he has a Mevo camera, that's what we're using right now. Yeah, this camera is automatically yeah. trying to... Yeah, I'll show, I'll show it, I won't show it, but I'll show, it keeps, I'll show Sometimes this it just shows like a corner of my ear or something, and it's, you know, Whatever. it's learning, Face, so, facial recognition. And then um, we picked up this um, Garmin v Vivo, mm -hmm. verb, sorry, there's too many words with these. Vivo, verb, Yeah, so this Vivo. is a GoCo, GoPro competitor, and... I'm going to do maybe like a little review on um, a Desk of Lady 8 or something, but it's like an upgrade to um, a GoPro. It's GPS. So it, does, it does voice activation. Voice activation, sensing, yeah. Bluetooth, yeah, it, Wi-Fi. Yeah. Can it stream directly? Yeah, it can. And, uh, you know, a million years ago I worked on this project that was location-based movie trailers. So when you walk near a movie theater, it would... Uh, oh, the battery just died on us. Um, it would know where you're at and it would play mm -hmm. extra movie trailers and more. And so this reminds me of that. So when you import the footage into the Garmin app, you can um, have all these dials and gauges and more. Yeah. It's kind of neat. Um, I don't do action sports. Um, bra. And this is the but, microphone? Yeah, and the microphone, it's, it does voice activation. So if you say, okay, Garmin, start recording, it'll do it. Um, and if you say, okay, Garmin, stop recording. The, the battery charging ports on the outside. So you can pop it into Well, something. that's... I, there's no accessories for it yet. Right now, it charges via um, USB uh, mini. mini, and then it has HDMI out. The thing that I don't mm. like about mm. the HDMI out is um, one, it's mini, so you have to like it's jiggle the micro, you have yeah. to, the micro. You have to jiggle the yeah. thing too much. And the other thing, um, and this is kind of true for a lot of HDMI out stuff. So you know, the cool thing about this camera is it does all these gauges and dials and all this stuff, but it doesn't do that live. On, yeah. on HDMI out. I haven't done like a broadcast with this yet, which I will. 
but we'll see. So that's my mini gadget review. Okay. Um, they totally ganked a lot of this stuff on GoPro and like. I know it's totally like well, you can tell it's inspired. Well, by. if you put me in a room and blindfolded me and had me hold this, I'd be like, oh, it feels like what GoPro should have done. It's like a GoPro. It's Pro. definitely not because it's got the rubbery. Uh, it's a, it's like yeah. a soft. They made some. They made some smart decisions, and you can tell that they're what doing. What is this? Something. It's like a, it's a plastic, but it feels metallic. Yeah. It's like, a, it's like a rubber coated metal. Transparent aluminum from Star Trek. So that's that. Um, so anyways, I'm gonna pick up the Mevo and I'll show okay. you this setup here. So this setup is, uh, I got this um, mic and then I got this, uh, it just does phantom power. Yeah. Which is uh, when you wanna imprison um, Kal-El enemies, you use phantom power. Yeah. So that's it. You get some plants. Yeah, so we're around here. Huh? This is where we're at. Let's see if we get clinked for having uh, the music in the background from YouTube. So that's our uh, okay. that's our ten minute update. All right. Got the break fast. That's a good update. Cheers.